Welcome, welcome, and thrice welcome to this new vlog. And before we start, there's this. Yes, that's the sound of this YouTube channel crashing through the 3,000 subscriber barrier. And I have a letter here on the subject from the Ipcrest cinephile who says, Dear Pete, congratulations on crashing through the 3,000 subscriber barrier. However, are you aware that there are 15 year olds vlogging from their bedrooms about Spider-Man No Way Home who have considerably more than this? Listen, Ipcrest, if that's your attitude, if you're gonna bring me down, then frankly, I'd prefer it if you didn't write to me. You too can be part of this success story. You can, as it were, siphon off some of the euphoria by subscribing to this channel. So hit that button now. <sighs> My first film this week is so gorgeous. It's got the grandeur of a movie from Hollywood's golden age and the addictive sugar rush of a daytime soap. It's Pedro Almodovar's Parallel Mothers, starring Penelope Cruz and Milena Smith, as two heavily pregnant women, one in her late 30s, one in her late teens, who meet in the hospital as they are about to give birth and whose newborns are whisked away for observation at the same time. Estás casada. No, y tú? Yo? No, no. Pues las dos somos madres solteras. Lo mío fue un accidente, pero estoy tan contenta. Lo mío también fue un accidente. Yo no me arrepiento, ¿eh? Yo sí. Pobre, no digas eso. Que todo va a salir bien, ya verás. No estás solita, ¿no? No, estoy con mi madre. Vale. Pero ella todavía no se ha hecho la idea. Pues ya se la hará. What happens next is in some ways a very familiar trope of storytelling, last invoked on film by the Japanese director Hirokazu Koreeda in his Like Father, Like Son. But this movie gives it a new dimension of passion, tragedy, eroticism and historical resonance. The father of Janice's child, that is Penelope Cruz's character, is Arturo, played by Israel Alejalde, who is a forensic anthropologist working for the Spanish government's Historical Memory Commission, tracing people murdered by the Francoite fascists during the Civil War and buried in unmarked mass graves. Janice believes that her father is one such person. Almodovar's films just seem to get more and more passionate, and if I can phrase it like this, more and more emotionally available. Cruz is such a wonderful performer and the close-ups that Almodovar gives her and the close-ups also for relative newcomer Milena Smith supercharge this film with tenderness. Motherhood here is the strongest force of all, strong enough to confront fascism. Such a brilliant film. Romola Garay is the actor who's been a valuable presence on British film and TV for a while and now she has made her very accomplished feature film debut as writer-director in this leery British horror, Amulet about an immigrant asylum seeker from some fictional Central European war zone, kind of Romania meets Bosnia, played by Alex Sekarenu, an ex-soldier crucified with secret anguish and guilt. A twinkle-eyed and weirdly disturbing nun, amusingly played by Imelda Staunton, finds this man a place to stay in a tumble-down house occupied by Magda, played by Swiss actor Carla Jury, who is keeping her strange old mum locked in an upstairs room. Things deteriorate from there. A demon. Do you know what a demon is? The demon's essence is evil, pure evil. But evil isn't simply an idea, Thomas. Through its body, it delivers evil. It becomes tangible. <laughs> It's that very Brit cinema version of body horror in which the body involved is every single manky, mouldy surface and dusty inanimate object. This film isn't perfect, but there are some great performances, particularly from Imelda Staunton, who for various reasons put me in mind of Kathleen Byron in Black Narcissus. This week's documentary is a surreal and dreamlike piece of work from filmmaker Salome Jashi called Taming the Garden. Some years ago, like the greedy, sad king in a fairy tale, 
Georgian billionaire and former Prime Minister Bidzina Ivanishvili set out to buy, uproot and transport hundreds of magnificent mature trees from all over the country to transplant into his own private garden. Clearly, the communities involved are very conflicted. Ivanishvili is presumably paying a lot of money, although the film itself doesn't give cash figures. And the owners of these trees must have originally been willing or even eager to sell. But when the awful moment comes and the trees have to be taken away, it feels as if part of their collective soul is being confiscated. And the garden itself looks like a strange, hot-housed, soulless place. A very interesting story, this, about rich people. Jeff Bezos has his pointless space mission. Bidzina Ivanishvili has his tamed garden full of trees. OK, that's it. Everyone, please get your debit cards out and buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews for The Guardian, and leave a comment on this vlog sharing your own thoughts. Be seeing you.